Um, okay, so welcome everyone. It's really a pleasure to see you. Um, this is a very, uh, a very wonderful time of the year um, in Israel in general and at Jesuit Lindenbaum. I was just saying to a couple of the alumni who are on here at the outset that this is a time where we're really starting to see the Bikurim, like the first fruits uh, of the students who, you know, have been learning here the whole year, the feeling of accomplishment and growth. And uh, it's really a, a very, very special thing to see. And of course, we're also in the time period of uh, you know, we had Yom Ha'atzma'ut, and now this week is Yom Yerushalayim, and we're very grateful that things have calmed down now also, Be'ezrat Hashem, we hope that it will stay that way here. Um, so feeling a lot to be grateful for, and on this giving day also, the the sense of uh, of gratitude that we all have to Midrash at Lindenbaum, I myself as an alumna, and um, and just it's I feel it's such a privilege to be able to to teach here and learn with and from the incredible students that we have. So, um, you know, really, really delighted to get to share just a little little taste of Torah with you. Um, and I thought in honor of Mother's Day, uh, it's Mother's Day in America and Canada, uh, and uh, and I wanted to just share some thoughts about um mothers and daughters, including mothers-in-law and daughters-in-law, um, in Megillat Root. Um, because I think that there's a really um, significant development that happens um, from the beginning of the Megillah until um, by the time we get to the end. So if you think about um, if you think about the story, right, of Ruth, so we have the story of uh, of the, you know, that they leave, uh, they leave Beit Lechem, there's a famine. Um, all the men in the family pass away, right? Um, Eli Melech dies, his kids marry these Moabite women, um, Ruth and Orpah, and then the two sons die. Um, and uh, and here we are, Nomi has heard that there's bread back again in, in Israel. And so she's planning to go back. Um, and it says in the in the Megillah, um, that she and her daughters are in love, that she gets up and her daughters in law, Vatashav, though it says that she returns, not like that they returned, okay, um, from Moab, because she heard while she was in Stay Moab that Hashem has given them bread. And then it says, that again, min hamakom, she leaves. In singular, she leaves the place, and her two daughters-in-law are with her. And then it says, and they're walking on the way. So what do you make of the fact that it keeps on referring to her in singular, that she's leaving, and then we keep on hearing that her daughters-in-law are with her? What do you think? Like, What do you think that means? What do you think that's trying to say? Like I'll raise that as a question, right? Look, it's it's a little weird. It should say that they were all going vatetsena, but it doesn't say vatetsena. It does vatetse. Now, I think what that indicates is is Nomi's feeling. In other words, Nomi is leaving. She's leaving on her own. She kind of looks behind her and she sees these two other women coming with her. Right? They're walking. Right? But in terms of who's leaving, who's going? It's really um, no me going on her own. And I I think that it's that's borne out. I can actually share my screen with you so you can see the psukim as well. Um, okay, so I'm uh, over here. Let's see. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to actually make it a little bigger. So it's very tiny. So maybe you could see it better. Okay. Okay. So we have... Over here, um, well, this is what I was referring to. Vatetse, she leaves, but then it says ushte kalatehima vatelachna, and then they're all walking together. So they're walking together, but no me, but it still says vatetse. So why? So it says over here. Then pasuk chet vatomer no me ushte kalateha. She says to the two daughters in law, lechna shavna, go back, go home. Okay, you should, Hashem should do chesed with you, like you've done with me, um, you know, uh, like you don't need to, you don't need to come back with me. I want you to go and to start a new life, which, right, what would we say about that, 
you know, about Nomi's approach, right? She is being very generous towards her daughters in law, right? She's like, you don't, you know, you have no future with me. Don't come back with me. I appreciate the gesture, but you know, this is not going to be a great thing for you. And I don't, I don't want to, you know, kind of take you away. And he, she gives them a bracha. You should each find a husband. And she kisses them and they all cry. And then it says, Vatomarna, they both say, sorry, keeps on, keeps on highlighting more than I want, but okay. It says that they both say, no, we're going to go back with you. And then Nomi insists again and says, I have no children, but no more children to give you, right? Even if I were to have a child in nine months, you know what? You're not going to wait for them, right? She's referring to the mitzvah of Yibum, right? The idea that like, it's her job to provide another husband for these women who whose husbands have died. She cannot uh, provide that. So she's saying like, let's, you know, just go. And it says that they all begin to cry in Pasuk Yudalit, that they all begin to cry. And Orpah kisses her mother-in-law, but Ruth stays with her. Okay? And like, you kind of get the sense that Nomi turns to her and it's like, what are you still doing here, right? And she says, you're, you're Yivim Tech, you're, you know, your fellow bereft wife, your fellow widow left. Why don't you go back? And Ruth says the famous words, right, of course, of like, no, don't make me leave. Wherever you go, I'll go. Wherever you sleep, I'll sleep, right? Your, uh, your God is my God. Your nation is my nation. Your God is my God. Wherever you die, I'm going to die. And that's where I'm going to be buried. Like, I am not leaving you until until I die or one of us dies. And it says, So she sees that she's insisting. So she stops talking to her. And they both walk and they get to Beit Lechem. And what do the townspeople say when they return to Beit Lechem? Okay, when the townspeople see Naomi, they say to her, Hazot Naomi. Is, could this be Naomi? She's, you have to imagine the scene, right? She left like with her family, maybe with nice clothing, maybe with nice bags, I don't know, right? And she comes back totally bereft, right? You can imagine she looks like she's aged many more than the years that she's aged. She lost her husband and her two sons, right? She has nothing. Maybe she's lost her money, right? She's coming back. Maybe her clothing is, is not, you know, freshly laundered and pressed. And the people can barely recognize her, right? She says, they say, Hazot, no me. And she responds, says, don't call me no me. No me means pleasant or sweet, right? But rather call me Mara. Call me bitter. Because God has been bitter to me. And then see what she says. Ani malea halachti. I went away full, very calm, Heshivani Hashem, and I came back empty. Lama Tigrena Lino, Mi Vashem Anabi Vishadai Hirali. Don't call me no me. Why are you calling me that? God has oppressed me. God has been bad to me. Now, when she says, I left full and I'm coming back empty, we have to imagine the scene, right? The townspeople are like looking, there's no me. But who is not? been mentioned in the scene who's standing right next to Naomi Ruth right Ruth is standing right next to her and she says the words Ani halachti Hashem, right I went away full and I came back empty and could you imagine being root? I just want, like, let's imagine being root in that situation. You just left everything you know to follow this woman, your mother-in-law, because you, you know, you felt it was the right thing to do and you wanted to follow her. And then she says, you know, I left with everything and I came back with nothing. She's basically called her nothing, right? You know, um, now that's a, a pretty, you know, that must have been, like, if I'm imagining root in this moment, you know, that must have been a pretty challenging thing to hear, right? Um, now, we can understand Nomi. What does Nomi mean? I lost everything I had when I left, right? Like, it's sort of this unfortunate, you know, kind of thing. Like, it's like when you walk into, like, I'm a teacher, right? So if I walk into a class, I'm like, where is everyone, right? Let's just say you say that. 
to the four people who are there, where is everyone? You're like, well, I guess I'm nobody, right? You know, that's the, that's like not what, what we're supposed to do, right? I mean, you understand what they mean, but it's like, you know, something you try not to, not try not to do, right? Um, okay, so, um, okay. So now, so what happens? So does this deter root? So if we look onwards, it really does not deter root, right? Root kind of like has so much compassion, so much caring for no me. I, I think of root as like one of those people who, you know, like there are people who, when you're having a hard time, they'll say like, how can I help? You know, and asking how can I help is actually a very nice thing to do. Like, I'm really not trying to knock it. I think it's important to ask what to do. And sometimes we don't know what to do. We don't know what the person needs and we ask what can I do, right? But what's even better than asking what can I do, right? Um, yeah, Rochelle, what do you want to say? No, no, I, I didn't. Um, oh, no, sorry. just something. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, saying what can I do is like, is so nice, but who's going to say, you know what, could you just bring me dinner? Uh, you know what, would you mind picking up my kids? You know, would you uh, like... you? It's much nicer to say, wow, you know, this cha challenging thing happened to you. I'm bringing over dinner, okay? Just tell me how many people you are and what your allergies are because I don't want to bring something you don't like. But I'm bringing over dinner. I mean, you know, that's what's happening, right? Or I'm picking up your kids from school or I'm getting you, you know, Shabbos is taken care of or whatever it is, right? Ruth is like one of those people who just does. She does does what you're meant to do um, and what she knows ought to be done without being asked. And we all have people in our lives who are like that, right? Um, you know, we all know people who are like that person. Um, you know, I'm thinking of my mom. My mom is like really excellent at that. She's just like, she just somehow knows what people want and she doesn't like she, she makes it so easy for them. By the time my mother finishes doing the thing for you that was a favor, she she's convinced you it was a favor for her. I don't know how she does it, but that's like, you know, that's that's her mode. Anyway, so um, so that's Root. And if you look at Root, Root is very active throughout this process, right? She brings up in Perak Bet, says that she says, I'm going to go to this field and I'm going to, and I'm going to pick food, right? I'm going to go get from in the, in the sheaves, right? I'm going to go get in the, in the wheat stalks. Okay. Um, and she happens to go to Boaz's field, right? Um, and Boaz is the perfect shidduch for roots because he also sees what no one else sees, right? He's also this person, like, this is actually an amazing, an amazing, it's not about mothers and daughters, but it's such an amazing thing. Like he, he says, she she, you know, he says to his people, like, don't, you know, let her, let her take and, and everything's going to be great. And, you know, we should let her, you know, she should drink and all of that. And he tells her, like, he tells her that, sorry, before that, um, he asks his people, who is that woman? And they say, oh, it's a Moabite girl that came back with Naomi. Okay. That's what happened. That's what they say. And then he goes over to her and he's really nice to her. And she falls on her face and she says, why are you being nice to me? I'm a stranger. Like what, why are you being nice to me? Which by the way, shows how like, Nobody was being nice to her, right? They call her the Moabite girl, right? And Boaz says, oh, I heard about all the amazing stuff you did for your mother-in-law after your husband died and you left everything and you came, Hashem should, Hashem should bless you and pay you back and you're amazing. Where did Boaz hear she was so amazing? All Boaz heard was a Moabite girl who came back from, from Moab. But when Boaz heard a Moabite girl who came back from Moab, he realized, he was like, oh my gosh, that girl, do you know what she did? She left everything she knew and she came back to take care of no me. Like they heard the same story, but to Boaz, that story was so different, right? So that's why Boaz is a perfect shit of Peru because he also like sees through what's going on, right? And can do the right thing. And okay, so ba so Ruth is, you know, picking then his field and fine, I called said there and, um, and then she brings it home to, and, and he gives her food and she even leaves over from some of the ready-made food and she brings it back to know me because she wants to share with her. Like she's such a doll. She's such an amazing daughter-in-law. Right. Um, and it's really incredible. Um, and, um, and then, um, 
And then she says, Rick says, okay. And I, and he told me to continue in his field and I'm going to continue in his field and great. And then they finish the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. And she's living with her mother-in-law and that's it. Okay. And that's the end of Perak Beth. What's amazing is that in Perak Gimel, there's a shift. And it's like right at the halfway point. Until now, no me has been the passive one, has been at best, right, at worst, ignoring her, right? And at best saying, wow, thank you so much for bringing the food. Wow, Hashem really helped us that you went to that field. But she's not like, she's still, and maybe still processing her own trauma, right? And her own challenges that she had, which were really, really significant. But suddenly, look what happens. Fatomer la Naomi is beginning of Perkimel. Let me try to find you a husband. Let me try to find you a home. And, and then she cooks up this whole plan that Ruth's going to go in secret to Boaz in this whole sketchy scene, right? But all of a sudden, in this Megillah, we have a shift. Instead of Nomi being passive and Ruth being active and taking care of her and thinking what she needs, Ruth, who has not said a word about what she wants, but must have been lonely. And she also lost her husband. And she has no prospects here, as Nomi told her that she would not. She has no prospects here. But she's content with that. And that's okay with her. And Nomi says, you know what? I need to do for her. And Nomi basically creates a situation where Boaz marries Ruth. And by the end of the story, you have um, you have this beautiful, beautiful ending where Ruth and Boaz get married. So Ruth's husband has been replaced, right? Nomi has a son-in-law, so to speak, in Boaz, right? And Nomi has this child, the child that's born to Ruth and Boaz, right? Which is Ruth and Boaz's child. It's not Nomi's child. Nomi actually doesn't have any more biological children, right? But whom does she have? She has a son-in-law in Boaz. And it says here, Nomi holds on to this baby and becomes the nurse of this baby. So essentially what's happened, and, and that's what the women say, right? Um, okay, she's better to you than, than uh, right? She's better to you than seven sons. And it says that the Shechinot call him a name, Yulad ben Lenaomi. A son has been born to Naomi. So after losing her two sons, she regains essentially two adoptive sons, right? Um, and I think that this um, this story is such a beautiful one in so many ways. And there's so many things to say about Ruth. We could go on for a long time. This is meant to be a short, <laughs> a short little taste. Um, but but one of the things I think comes out of this story, which is so meaningful and important, is that is this process by which. Um, mothers and children and mothers-in-law and mothers and daughters and mothers-in-law and daughters-in-law um, start to see each other as people, right? With needs and with challenges um, and with things to process and have patience for each other and can handle those little slights, you know, like I went away at full and I came back empty, you know, what am I chopped liver kind of situation, right? But, you know, like, like Ruth can take it. She gets it. She gets it that no me, like that she needs to go back with no me and she can't leave her behind. And she even gets it that like sometimes no me doesn't have the kawah, doesn't have that strength to be there for her. Um, it's like the first time as children, we see our parents cry, right? It's like this moment where you're like, wait, no, you're the strong one. I'm the, like, that's not supposed to happen, right? But but we realize at some point, we all realize at some point that our parents are people and that they have needs and 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 challenges and we need to see them, right? Um, and this beautiful process by which no me having not really seen Ruth um, 
and maybe inspired by Ruth's approach to her, really starts to see her again um, and is able then to kind of reclaim her place as a mother, right? Because what do mothers do? Why do we celebrate Mother's Day, right? Because moms like just take care of us, right? They're there for us. They're our rock. They're our person, right? They're, you know, they're the person that that, that carried us literally, right, for nine months, that, you know, fed us, that, that, that took care of us, and that continues to be a source of inspiration forever, even, even you know, after 120, right? Uh, Bezrat Hashem. And, um, and know me, it's actually, I think, like a part of know me is redemption here is and reclaiming her name as Naomi instead of Myra is that she's actually able to take care of Ruth to take care of this new baby right and reclaim her place as a mother as opposed to being someone who wasn't able to do that um and so it's a great inspiration to me you know both as a mother and a daughter right to to try to um you know to try to see like see the people in our lives, um, see what they need, um, and try to help, um, try to help them, you know, and try to try to be there for them in whatever way they need, um, you know, in that moment. So um, just a, a little, a little, a little Mother's Day Torah for you. Uh, happy to answer any questions that people have or hear comments if you like.